All right, guys, welcome to the pre-season qualifiers for ESL Major League, another league like um, Join Dota for the, those of you who do not know. And uh, I am Mad Kings. I am streaming for the first time on my hitbox. So, guys, please, um, if if there's anything wrong, uh, let me know because I have no idea right now. Either way, let's get ready and um, ready to start. Wombat Gaming versus Valkyrie Esports Gaming will be coming up. And uh, as you can see, a couple of bans have already been shown. As Faces Void Plus Sanking will be banned out by Valkyrie, two offlane heroes. So uh, they're ignoring the support heroes for now. Probably want to. They probably want to pick some of them up themselves. And Wombat. They go for the Drow Ranger as the first thing. People still fear the Drow Ranger after all. Makes sense, makes sense. Very annoying here to deal with after all. So let's see the Shadow Demon did get banned up by one bad, so they did not want the Shadow Demon to go through. The Conquer will be the first pick by Valkyrie. Like I said, they banned two offline heroes. The draw was banned by one bad, so they pretty much um well supposedly they had a free pick between Shadow Demon, Kunk, and Elder Titan. Three very, very popular support heroes. Oracle is also one of them, so I guess four. Um, and one of them got banned out by Wombat, and you know, they pick up the Conquer. The Oracle should be a response pick by Wombat, because the Oracle gives you the option to use Fade's Edict to completely deny all the damage that the Conquer does. Um, and Oracle, in general, is a very amazing hero. It can fit into pretty much any lineup whatsoever. So, um, that should be at least one of the two direct response picks from Wombat Gaming, unless they want to go full up crazy. Um, I must admit, I, I haven't casted them in a long time. I think it's a very, very long time I saw Wombat Gaming. So I'm not so sure about what kind of uh, what, what, what kind of players they are, what kind of drafters Oracle. they are. But Oracle will be the first pick. So that much is true. And uh, what else will be picked up? I love how that mouse bug is, is, is haunting me right now. I've had this so many times where you have some weird ass mouse. I'm actually still curious to, to, to like whose mouse this is, like wh whether it's one of the other casters. Um, I know there's one other caster in the game or whether it's the spectators or some, something like that, but it's a, it's a mysterious mouse. Uh, I will most likely have to um, reconnect after the game loads in, but we'll take it when that comes. There's, uh, there's no need to worry, no need to rush it. So um, yeah, let's see. Secondary pick from Wombat Gaming there. You see most of the reserve time already, as uh, they apparently don't really have any clear idea of what they want to pick, what they want to play, but we should see that coming up. Um, a core pick obviously would be the direct way to go for it. Um, if they want very, very safe lanes, they could go for a Juggernaut as a secondary pick against the Conquer, since the Jug is very often a response pick to the Conquer, so you at least have a mid laner or safe laner who doesn't have to worry about getting X mark too often. The Elder Titan will be the pick though. So one bet they show both of the support heroes to begin with. Elder Titan, obviously very great hero. The synergy between Oracle and the ET is decent. With the Fortune's End, you can set up for the Elder Titan stun. And um, in general, you know, Elder Titan, he does a lot of work. So, um... Makes sense. It makes sense. Valkyrie, they kind of have the uh, the leftover support here, so that's very popular, at least a little bit limited. Um, but together with a Conquer, um, hmm, I could imagine that. I don't know, honestly. Um, Keep of the Light is a pretty good hero here. Uh, um, obviously, um, the mana leak is not that useful against the Oracle, but um, if you force the Oracle to use a lot of focus with his defensive spells on like certain things, then obviously there's other things he cannot worry about. Uh, you can only purge so much as an Oracle, so you know, that makes, that's uh, a possibility, um, definitely. And with Mirana being picked up as a secondary hero from Valkyrie, um, they can very easily go for the Coddle. It's, it's very common to see um, Cardle and Marana together because then you can have the Marana split push a lot um, and just get recalled whenever needed by the Keeper of the Light. So we'll see if they want to go for that route or if they want to change it up a little bit. There's still heroes like Riki. Um, Ogre Magi is also very, very strong with Kunkka as well. It does give you two melee heroes, but they're both very power, they're both very tanky and they have ranged spells, so they can kind of make up for that. 
The Huska does get banned out by Valkyrie, just um, in case of Oracle Huska combos. The Bane plus Timbersaw will be removed by Wombat Gaming. I'm not so sure about the Bane, I guess that has something to do with one of the future picks, because um, by default, the Oracle can take away the ultimate from the Bane, so he shouldn't have to worry too much about that. And the Timbersaw, a lot of um, burst damage that could potentially come out. Um, Valkyrie, they have sometimes run the Mirana in the offlane position by... Um, Luft, I believe, no, actually Scapo is the one playing Mariah often nowadays, but uh, they have run it as a support hero, they have run it as a, as a mid hero, as a safe lane, as an off lane, I'm pretty sure they've run most of the um, different positions with Mirana, so um, having the Mirana as a secondary pick is just a very open pick for them, and that's why the Timber Souls banned out, so, you know, they don't expect necessarily to have a Mirana mid, um, and they just, you know, they remove it. They could have picked the Timber up themselves, but Timber is generally not so good against the Kunker because of the X mark. You can keep him under control for a long period of time, and the Kunker, the X mark can also set up an arrow if you X mark into turn into boat. Then you have quite a long little window to use your arrow in. And one by gaming, they continue by picking up the Slaughter as an offlane, I imagine. Hmm, I'm, I'm wondering. Well, it's it's great synergy between the ET as well as the Slaughter because um, the ET takes away all of the base armor from the heroes and then if you have the Slaughter with the amplified damage, that kind of hurts um, since you get down to zero armor and then suddenly you have minus, uh, at level 3, it's minus 20 armor, which makes you take a lot of damage. So I like the synergy between the ET and the Slaughter. Uh, that's going to hurt a lot, especially against the Morphling. Morphling, you know, low HP hero, he doesn't have the greatest amount of armor to begin with. Um, he relies mostly on his HP, um, so if he has minus 20 armor, it's gonna, it's gonna hurt a lot. And Invoker will be picked up by Wombat very, very quickly after the Morphling got shown and got picked. A lot of burst damage, a lot of pure damage as well. Um, so the Morphling has to be a little bit careful and uh, a little bit... Well, he has, he has to be uh, prompt and fast when he uses his um, strength gain. Because usually Morphlings, uh, early in the game, they sit around like 400 to 6 700 HP. And if you have a Sunstrike landing on top of you, that's going to be a big chunk of your HP pool um, disappearing instantly. So you have to be a little bit careful. Um... We could also see a Cross Wax Invoker come online. Um, draining Morphling's mana is generally not a bad idea. Kunkka and Dying both also rely on spamming spells. Mirana, pretty much the same thing. Um, but usually we just see Exalt Invoker. I, I haven't seen in Cross Wax in a long time. But uh, you, you never know. It sometimes shows, its, uh, shows, shows itself in the game. Undying does get picked up by Valkyrie as well. A lane domination here, much like the Ogre Machai. Um, I guess it's just about getting some heal as well, getting some team fight control with the tombstone is always great. Um, tombstone is especially annoying against the ET plus the Slada, both of these heroes. Um, they kind of rely on the movement speed um, a lot, and you know, blinks online when the when the Slada has a blink, it's very annoying to have a, to have zombies chasing you and hitting you. Um, so it makes a good, it makes makes great sense. The Slag does get banned now by Valkyrie. Um, Kind of annoying for Morphling to deal with Slark in general because it's a very evasive here. It's very hard for you to get right clicks onto a Slark, and you know he he drains your stats, so that's never nice. One but gaming they do ban out the Lion, expecting that the Mirana will be a core hero and the Undying will be in some kind of dual off lane, and then another support hero could be picked up by Valkyrie. I think that's that's a fair assumption. Um, they also have the Morphling in general that. Sh well, considering it's Valkyrie, I think it's going to be offlane Morphling, because Scabo, he always, he's he's like, he's the Morphling offlane player, so that's pretty common to expect him to be playing it in the offlane role. And then they have Morphling plus Undying as a dual offlane, so another, another safe lane carry could also be picked up. We'll see. That kind of makes that kind of makes the most sense. Have him have the Mirana mid, have a dual off lane with a Morphling, maybe even a tri lane. If they go for this kind of dual or tri lane, Juggernaut is in, in general decent at dealing with these situations. And Valkyrie, they pick up the Centaur. I guess that I'm not really sure if that shut down my uh, my my hopes for the Morphling off lane. Uh, they, that, it could still happen. Um, have a tri lane with the Morphling and then have the Centaur as a safe lane. The Centaur in a one-on-one -on -one situation should do very easy, very well against the Slada overall. But uh, we'll see. We'll see. Centaur definitely isn't a hero that gets picked that much. So uh, 
you, you should never say never. Um, if you think about Alliance, for example, they, they, they weren't... Um, they, they, they ran Centaur safe lane quite often, so we'll see. As, um, yep, it will be Skypo on the Morphling, so offlane, offlane Morphling is going to be the thing, and Love will be playing the Centaur, so we'll see, we'll see a treat for ourselves. Alright, the game has started, and yeah, I can't control anything, uh, move anything, anything, so I will just reconnect quickly, I hope you guys won't mind too much. Let's see. Usually I have to disconnect completely from Dodo, so I'll do that quickly. It only take a second or two. All right, guys, let's go, let's go, let's go. There we are, the game is started, I can control myself, as we can see, Valkyrie they are going for a little bit of an interesting move, as they go for a 4-man smoke gank in the top lane. They don't really seem to be finding anything though, as uh, one by Gaming, they are hiding themselves in the bottom lane, and as you can see, the Ant Mage was the last pick from one by Gaming, I didn't actually get to talk about the Ant Mage pick. Um, good against the Morphling, if the Morphling is in a carry position, it actually does look like maybe the Morphling is setting up for it. Um, it looks like he will be the safe lane and they will have the Sent Tower in the off lane in that uh, aggressive tri lane. So I guess the Morphling, when he gets a lot of farm, I'm, I'm kind of curious to see if he goes for the classical like off lane stun build on the Morphling or if he just goes for carry Morphling. Um, we'll see, we'll see. I mean, it's probably going to be carry Morphling if he's in a one-on-one -on -one situation. I can't really imagine anything else. And uh, as you can see from Wombat Gaming, having the Ant Mage in the bottom lane as well, they, they kind of expect that tri lane. Um, whether it's the Morphling or the Centaur, they very much expect a tri lane, so they will dodge it. They will move the Ant Mage into the bottom lane. He should have a decent time to begin with, us, uh, at least, as uh, rotations should happen easily. Uh, but if, if Valkyrie make any kind of rotations to the bottom lane, then uh, the Ant Mage will surely just move himself top, and then we can have a couple of rotations within the uh, first two minutes from both teams. So we'll see, we'll see. Alright, mid lane, it will be Mirana versus the Invoker, and Elder Titan, he's going for the snipe, he wants to kill that Kura, he needs to go very deep under the tower though to do so, the arrow will be shot through, or at least uh, Blaze one is, uh, is uh, taunting him with it, let's see as easy, he took so much damage, he's still chasing the Kura though, he really wants it, and he's not, he's not gonna get it. The yellow tide really wanted it, but sadly that's that's gonna be a futile attempt as Blazemon. He was a little bit too quick on the trigger just controlling that courier. And uh, apart from that, he will be harassed a little bit in the mid lane as the easy will just show himself and uh, deal a couple of right clicks with the help of the cold snap from the invoker. Nothing too big though. Bottom lane, we do have a dual lane so far. Antimage Oracle versus the Undying who rotated down here with the Morphling. And top lane will be Centaur Conquer against the Slala. So, um... I suppose it's a decent lane for Valkyrie in all three lanes. Um, the bottom lane should be a little bit easier for them because the Undying is just such an aggressive laner. Um, it's very hard for Antimage to deal with it. Even if the ET comes down here and lands his hand, uh, the Undying is just is just annoying to deal with. You have an Oracle, you have an Antimage. Both of these heroes don't really deal with Undying that well. He will get it gone on though, but he's stealing some of the stack, some of the stats they have. He's taking a lot of damage though, and it looks like he will drop down as the Undying will be the first blood to Wombat Gaming. A little bit of a turn of events, obviously the Elder Titan does a lot of damage with his right clicks early on, so just a uh, 3 man power and they got a kill. The Undying was a little bit too careless. And in the meantime, top lane German play, he is getting a lot of levels on the support Kunker, as uh, so far he's halfway to level 3, you have 9 in the center, also getting a couple of levels. The Slaughter is leeching experience though, so the offense Slaughter will get his levels... Edge and that will be the slaughter drop dropping down as a, it's a little bit too much control X mark torrent um, And so on and so forth a lot of control the ant mage will have Raz Scapo on the morphling in the bottom lane a little bit just um, poking him 
Like I said, the matchup Anti-Mage versus Morphling is actually decent for the Anti-Mage because Morphling relies heavily on his mana pool. So obviously a hero that drains the mana is, uh, is always good. Makes you unable to morph that much strength and morph that, that much ag agility. Makes you unable to use waveform at some point and so on. Right, a very slow start apart from that. Um, last hit wise, we do have Valkyrie having a small lead, and let's see, bottom lane love will get gone on very, very deep down here as a German player on the Conquer will rotate in and he will lend a hand. We should see the classical 3 and 3 lane now. And uh, let's see, as the Anti Mage, he is only level 2, so he's not the scariest here in the world, and he needs to be a little bit careful because the Conquer being here with the Axe Mark with the Torrents, that can definitely change the scale of things, as uh, that should return the favor to Valkyrie's side. As like I said, they have they have a better laning situation right now, um, as long as they are having the numbers, I guess. Top lane, we do have the Centaur. He's out leveling the Slaughter a little bit, so being alone now, from now on, is, is completely fine for him. He has enough region to spam his double edge as well, and he has the return damage, so if the Slaughter ever tries to hit him, he will take a lot more damage than he deals. So everything seems to be working out fine for Centaur. I imagine he will go for the Vanguard as the first item, just tanking up and making sure that the Slaughter is pretty much going to be completely unable to do any damage to him. Let's see his German play. He does rotate into the mid lane. He does have enough mana for an X mark, but obviously without making a proper rotation, he will not be able to do anything. He's just helping them around a little bit, X marking him back to the base so he can get a free bottle refill. Um, yeah, makes sense. You know, free mana, free bottle refill. The Conker is just being a useful little guy. He is level 4, and it looks like he will start leveling up his Tidebringer. Um, it's kind of. It's kind of a mix for uh, for people. Some some Kanker players in the support position like to go full on X Mark and Torrent, and others they like to like build into a semi carry position where you level up Tidebringer early and then get like armlet drums and start doing some damage as well. And it looks like he will do the secondary thing this game. Last hit wise, we do have the Centaur leading the last hit shot. I guess he is still considered the safe lane of this game. So, uh, 32 versus the 18 from the Anti Mage, pretty much dub doubling him up. And now on the bottom lane, we do have the Oracle getting gone on Torn. We'll lift him up, and he will be taken down. The Anti Mage, he will be controlled a little bit as well. He does do a little bit of damage to the Conquer before leaving, but uh, he has to inevitably just blink himself under the tower. He will be fine, but uh, he's level 4. He's not really getting that many lasses, even the Morphling is out last hitting, hit, last hitting him. So, it's a slow start for the anti -mage. Definitely this will not be like any amazing battle of your time and we will have coming up unless he starts getting kills. So uh, we'll see. He may even rotate up to the top lane once the Slaughter's level 6. I imagine the Slaughter will start making rotations and they will attempt to give some more space for the anti -mage because at the rate it's going right now, the anti -mage will struggle in, in like in 5-6 minutes time where the Mirana will get a lot of farm. He will have his Akinim Scepter coming online at some point as well. And uh, okay, Courier control in the top lane, they're just uh, doing some work with it. The Centaur is getting amplified by the Slaughter. Now with the amplified damage up, he can start to put some pressure on the Centaur, obviously doing a lot of damage. The Elder Titan is also up, he does have the Echo Stomp, he will set it up, Sunstrike will be used as well, and they don't even need the Stomp, the Sunstrike will be more than enough as the Centaur will be taken down. That's pretty much the chipping skill for the Slaughter. Once you get level 6, the Amplified Damage makes you so much stronger, both when it comes to using your um, stun with the Slithering Crush as well as his pure right clicks. So uh, the Centaur needs to be a little bit careful. He almost has had his Vanguard as well. I'm pretty sure he actually had enough gold to buy it, but um, losing a little bit of gold from that death. Let's see the Antimage. He is actually walking himself to the top lane, so it looks like that will be the case that they will try and give him some space, but see Centaur, he's getting jumped on, and that's a four-man sandwich, he will get his stun off, but inevitably he will be taken down, that will be Y50, who gets the fin finishing kill um, on the Oracle, so, you know, support Oracle getting the last hits, makes sense. It's a very bursty hero, and, you know, you just want to secure the kill. It's not too bad to let the supports have some of the last hits on kills in the early game, just so they can get early boots, they can get um, the first item a little bit faster, get wards a little bit uh, more frequently and whatnot. 
And in the mid lane, we now have Vinu on the slaughter. He's rotating in place. Mana will be gone on. He does have a leap available, but he will not be able to use that leap as the slaughter. He put that was that was the very edge of the still living question. Hit the Mirana a little bit. Um, unfortunate as he was weeding it as much as he possibly could. Torrent will be used on Vinu so far, but he is very tanky. He's not the easiest guy to kill. The Sunstrike will be missing. And let's see if Vinu can be taken down. They do have another X mark in three seconds, but with the stun coming on from the yellow side, they may actually be able to return this as German player will be gone. The torrent will be dodged by Vino, and now he's chasing. He will get the kill onto the Kunker as the Oracle is just spamming his purifying flames. And now they will even make an attempt onto the Undying. The Yellow Titan is moving it from the side. Echo Stomp comes through. They will set it up, and they should be able to get at least the Undying. They very much will be. Y50 will maybe drop down because of this as uh, reinforcements arrive. The Slaughter is also a little bit in trouble. He doesn't have enough mana to actually TP out, even if he uses his stick charges. So he has to take the long walk. And uh, in the center, he is spotting him up. X mark will be used, and that will be the slaughter getting controlled. He will be hit by the arrow as well, and he should be taken down. In the meantime, we do have the center trying to catch up with the yellow titan, but he's just a little bit too fast, so they will only get that one kill. Either way, guys. So four to six so, so far, um, net worth wise, we do have the Invoker in the lead with his um, Hand of Midas online. Obviously, he will start farming a little bit faster. The Centaur is quickly to follow him. The Antimage has started to gain a little bit of net worth as uh, he's so far just last hitting in the top lane all alone. Bottom lane, the Yellow Titan will be taken down as the Stampede will be used by the Centaur and they will just run him down and get a kill on him. Y50 needs to be a little bit careful as you can see he's actually doing so much damage himself with those right clicks onto the Centaur courtesy of the level four return. And uh, what was I talking about before? The Marana is 1,000 gold behind of the Invoker, so he's not having the best amount of net worth in the game. Um, he did get killed off all a second ago, where the Invoker has also gotten a kill with the Sunstrike. He has a Midas, so naturally the Invoker is just getting a little bit m more net worth um, through those kills. Oh, let's see the Oracle maybe a little bit in danger. He will use the Fate Seed on himself, at least dodging the damage from the Torrent. Now the Slada comes in from the side as well, and... Uh, the Kunker will just give up that attempt, but at least he poked a little bit to the Oracle, made sure that the Oracle knew that he was not welcome. And let's see, oh, the Marana's moving him. It may be a little bit too aggressive, even though he has a double damage rune that is actually also um, being taken away. And uh, he was moving in, he was trying to land an arrow onto the Antimage as he had vision of him, but because of that arrow, they know that there's uh, some wards here, and they will take it away um, instantly. It's pretty logical, you know, you don't just shoot an, a random arrow here while the Antimage is farming and attempt to hit him. It could have been an easy kill, but um, in the end, it will just take away that um, deep wall that they had in the jungle. Let's see, top lane, Vino will will be stunned up by Scabbo. So far, he is doing the the old school Scabbo thing, being off lane, off lane, and just going for the full-on stun build. So, uh... What is it? 4.25 second stun is uh, is what it's at at the moment, and uh, that's that's painful. You know, it's also beautiful setup for the arrow placement. Maybe using one, and indeed he will. That will be an arrow hitting onto the slaughter. He's taking a good amount of damage, but with the oracle behind him, they cannot really go too aggressive onto the slaughter. They don't want to dive him. And let's see, the yellow side will be controlled. I do have an X mark for him as well. Now the slaughter moves in from the side. Maybe something happens, but the conquer is the one getting run down by the slaughter. So um. Both teams, they're just kind of dodging each other out and just looking at each other, hoping for the best. In the meantime, we had the Antimage farming the bottom lane with the Centaur trying to pressure him a little bit, but he doesn't have any mana for the stun, and all he is really worth is just his tankiness at the, at the moment on the Centaur. He will he will just harass him enough to to make him run away, as the Antimage is actually trying to do some last onto the Centaur, but Max return, my friend, is very painful. In the meantime, top lane, we do have the Conquer dropping down as the first thing. He did use his boat, but he didn't really get anything from it. And in the meantime, we do have the Mirana very, very deep. And he will just TP himself away. We have Luft on the Undying getting control as well. He will be taking down Scabbo. They use a stun onto one of the heroes. They didn't really work anything. They lose the Tombstone as well. Now TP out will happen from Scabbo, as he will get out just fine. TP rotations do happen into the bottom lane now, uh, now though, as the Centaur may be taken down. Amplified damage will be used. The Antimage, I'm a little bit surprised he didn't blink in front of him and just tried to... Um, block him potentially, but I guess, I guess with the max return and and the fear of like a maxed out double edge, um, he he just doesn't want to bother. I don't know. It felt like it, they could have gotten a kill there if he if he blocked him, but doesn't matter. 
right? Blaze Mod on the Marana. Will be Sunstruck up. He will be controlled. They do get the vision out on him before he goes invisible with his ultimate. So Marana will be a little bit um will be a little bit dead. As the yellow Titan is running him down, the Arco will finish him off. And now we do have the Centaur Stampede being used. The starter will be run down. Maybe they can get a kill on him. But no, the Oracle Ultimate will keep him alive for now. He will move towards the Oracle and hope for some healing, but it doesn't look like any healing will be given to him. He is just fine for now though. The Invoker does get stunned up by Scapo on the Morphling, and uh, when you're stunned for 4 seconds, it's very, very um, easy to drop down. So 1 for 1 trade in the mid lane, slightly in favor of Valkyrie, because of the Invoker being worth a little bit more. So at least they get a better trade this time around, but having these trades early game is very much favoring Wombat Gaming, because they're the ones with the late game team, they have the Invoker, they have the Anti-Mage, who's just, you know, trying to get his battle free up and running on top of the Treads. They have a Slada as well, who could potentially go like semi-carry laid on, he does have Tranquil Boots and almost his Blink, only needing about 700 more gold to finish it. Let's see Scabo. Okay, the Anti-Mage is getting stunned up now, that is 4 seconds my friend. Very very painful, he will be taking down the Anti-Mage. And now Scabo, 4 seconds to go, then he can use another stun. Oh, but Blazemon is taking so much damage, he didn't have his sleep available, they will stun up the Slaughter though. And now Love comes in on the Undying, they will try and do as much damage as possible. A stun comes through by the Slaughter, but he should be taken down regardless. So a 2 for 1 trade. Losing the Mirana is a little bit unfortunate, but they still get the better trade-off. So uh, they will be happy with it nonetheless. And you can see the impact of a stun Morphling. He even has the Midas now coming online. So I'm not really sure if that means he will at some point translate himself into a carry. Um, usually... When I think about like offlane Morphling, I'm pretty sure the build is something like Arcane's. Then you go for items like Blink, Eels, uh, potentially an E-Blade as well at some point. But uh, we'll see, we'll see. Lotus Orb is also a very popular item, but this game there's not really too much you want to reflect onto Wombat, so I guess it's just, you know, Eels and Blink would probably be the go-to items. Aetherlands is also very strong, so you have at least more range on your stun. Makes also a lot of sense. We'll see. And the other items coming online by Valkyrie. The Kunkka, obviously, just trying to do some right click, get Fates Boots and potentially Drums um, Armlet laid on. The Centaur does have Vanguard as well as a Hood of Defiance, so he's just he's just tanking up as much as possible. He almost has a blink on top of that as well as he's a top net worth hero. And with the early Vanguard and just having a free lane most of the time, he's able to get a lot of farm for himself. And now in the enemy jungle, we do have the yellow Titan getting controlled. He will be turning it up, he will be hit by a boat. And he will be taken down. I say that though, the Oracle will use a false promise on him. Morphling comes in from the side. He does have a stun being used onto the Invoker, controlling him for a little bit. The L Titan does drop down. And now the Invoker is a little bit in danger. He does go invisible. They don't have any detection for him. And now he will reveal himself. He's trying to bring down German and play on the Conquer, but that will not happen. Oh, but it's <laughs> the Anti Mage, he's playing himself far. Maybe German play will drop down in the end. Um, he's definitely low enough. Sunstrike will be off cooldown in 13 seconds with the Invoke. And the Antimate has another blink in 5 seconds. So we'll see if a German player will survive this. It's, it looks a little bit grim, especially with the Oracle nearby. He can just... Isn't he in... He's, he should be in range to use Purifying Flames in a little bit. So German player is definitely dead. And Mirana also dropped down to see German play. Oh, he's actually getting healed so far, so he's, he's fine for now, but he will be controlled up. He will be healed by the Undying, still alive. And yeah, that will be the end as the Antimate does get the kill. Luff is now a little bit in danger as he's taking a lot of damage from the Oracle as well. But the Tombstone is doing so much against the Oracle that the Zombies is killing him. And he will be taken down. Now we have the Scabbo just trying to get some more kills going. He does have a stun available. And let's see if he's in range to use it. Doesn't look like that will be the case. He's chasing a little bit, but he will finally back himself up. Once again, the trade favors Valkyrie. They lose him around as well as the Conquer, but they get the Antimage Oracle. And they are... Are they? Yeah, they're, they're actually ahead right now, but I guess the Antimage is just, just worth a little bit more than the Mirana. And uh, because of that, they, they, they get more, I guess. Alright, let's see what else is coming online. The Invoker is going for Rushed Up back in himself. A very interesting build, no, not going for any like build-up item like an Eels or Blink, um, even Travel Boost. He's just going straight for the Axe. He wants to do as much damage as possible as early as possible. Um, and it will be online in 500 gold, so pretty much like a 17-18 minute Axe will come online on the um, Invoker. The Antimage has his Battle Fury online soon. But uh, like I talked about earlier, it's it's he's not the best icon, the the best battle fury timing in the world, as he's still thirteen hundred short of it. So maybe eighteen minutes, which is at least like four or five minutes late for a safe lane anti mage, courtesy of being in the off lane and then having to roam around a lot, getting killed a, a couple of times as well. 
The blink is online on the throttle, which is probably the biggest thing from one by gaming. And in the meantime, we do have Valkyrie just trying to push as aggressively as possible with nine on the center. He has trail boots, he has Vanguard and the hood, so he's very tanky, he's very mobile with the trail boots as well. Um, and they will just, you know, use the X mark as much as possible to get people back and forward. The Morphling does have a blink as well now, so you will be able to blink forward, use his stun, and then set up for a potential boat or whatever they want to use. And let's see, as Valkyrie, they're looking like they want to pressure high ground as early as possible. Makes sense with their lineup, they, they, they are very, very tanky, they have a lot of control. Now 9 moves in further, so the Slada does get control, but he's not actually taking that much damage as uh, that phase ED blocked most of that damage. Now we have the ultimate coming through by the Yellow Titan, Nothing will, no one will be hit, the Stomp doesn't hit anyone either, and now the Invoker gets hit by the Arab, but the False Brothers will save him, as the Oracle keeps him keeps him sound and safe. Luff will be the one dropping down as he's diving a little bit too deep, now the Slada blinks forward, gets a kill on the Conker as well. And let's see if the Slaughter will be taken down. Scabble does not have a stun available for the next three seconds, so that will not happen. Two people dropping down on Valkyrie as Valkyrie, they do not get the successful push they were looking for, and maybe they lose even more people as Nine on the center will be taken down. Scabbo is a little bit in danger as well. He's getting low on mana. He will blink himself away, and it looks like Wombat Gaming, they will be fine with that trade-off. They got the center, but they lost the Slaughter. Still very much worth it in the end as Wombat Gaming. Successful hold, successful defense, that will pretty much be the battle for you complete on the anime. So finally you will start having a decent um, net worth gain per minute. The Invoker has his acronyms coming out to him as well, so they're getting very scary on Wombat's side. As, as Valkyrie, you know, they, they pretty much finished items on every single hero before that push, so they don't have anything coming online soon. Scavo has 2000 gold on him, courtesy of the Hand of Midas, so I guess he can get something like an Edelens. Uh, soon the Mirana has the axe in actually now, so I guess that's a pretty big item. The Conker has his Vladimir's coming online. Interesting item choice, but uh, it makes sense if you want to pressure high ground early. Just just you know getting aura items for your team that can make everyone tanky and makes a lot of sense. The anti mage actually goes and denies himself. I'm not really sure what that was about. Um, because you know I mean denying yourself is generally amazing because you get back to the base faster but that's only in the laning stage I mean 20 minutes into the game you, you're dead for 30 seconds um, so uh, well 40 seconds actually now smoke gang from Wombat they do find the center maybe not the one they were looking for though as the center is very very tanky even with the amplified damage he's maybe a little bit too much to deal with the zombies is keeping the invoker in control for a little bit he will go invisible and the center will just walk himself away the arrow does land onto the invoker he gets controlled he gets torn up he gets boated up as well the boat will not do any damage courtesy of the fates edict though the Oracle will be stunned up, so no false promise will be available for the next couple of seconds. The Oracle is dropping very, very low, the other side as well. But with a nice stomp, it looks like Valkyrie will be stopped in their, in their shoes as all four people got stumped. The Oracle gets stunned up again by Scabo. He will be taken down, but trading the Undying for the Oracle. Um, well, actually, the Undying is worth less, so, so never mind me. He, it's, it's a fine trade. Um, it does look like Wombat got a little bit more gold from it, though. Tier 2 tower in the mid lane will be taken down by Valkyrie as they continue pressuring tower after tower. That will be the last tier 2 tower of the game. It actually gets denied by the Invoker, so nice deny with that Forge Spirit. And now the other time he's maybe a little bit in danger as he does get taken down. That Akinun set on the Mirana does a lot of damage. And now Scapo goes in, blinks forward, stuns up the Slaughter, even pushes him towards his team with that um, Adapter Strike, and they will get another kill. So um, the Morphling strats are working out perfectly. He is getting the Akinun set as the next item. Makes sense, you have an Undying, it's it's kind of an old school, it used to be like a very very memey thing to do, but it, it, it's something you people um, played around with the first time the Akinus, um got online on the Morphling as the most, the strongest use of the Axe is pretty much copying the Undying, um, because then you have more um, Decays, you have more Soul Rips, you can use two Tombstones instead of one, and just ma massify the amount of um, zombies you have, and we all know that zombies are annoying, and they when they stack up, they slow a lot more, they do a lot of more damage, and generally it's just a very, very powerful sieging tool, so um, that should be the, the use of the Axe. Like I said earlier though, I mean, Morphling Offlane is, is, is a very fun thing to play around with, um, when it comes to building the hero, because there's so many different players that build it in so many different ways, so it's it's hard to tell what's the most effective way. But I guess getting an Akinus when you have an Undying on your team is pretty logical. You could even copy the Kunk and have another like set of X Mark Torrent combos available. That's also a little bit annoying. 
And let's see the animation in the top lane does get that T1 tower taken down. He is pressuring on as much as possible. He should be able to, well, at least get a tier 2 tower, but he's playing it safe for now. He's just farming up as much as he can. He does have a Yasha online now, so slowly getting into that Manta style. But uh, at the same time, Valkyrie, they're just pressuring on. They're doing a lot of damage to the tower. The Centaur is the one in the front line, and uh, he's, he's, he's purposely getting hit by the tower because of the return damage it applies to the towers. So the towers um, hit themselves a little bit. It's not as strong as it used to be because the towers have a lot more armor now. You can see it's on 22 armor, so the return damage is not that amazing, but it's still something. Still something. The barrel onto the Elder Titan. He's getting control so far. Valkyrie still just trying to to break this high ground, but it seems like it's too difficult to do so. And uh, the Ant Mage, he's he's still just farming up. As we know, every minute that goes by, he's pretty much getting like 600, 700 more gold. He will have his uh, Manta Star coming online very very soon. He has a recipe on it. Um, he can buy it when whatever he wants to. So if they don't break the high ground soon, or at least get some kind of other value given to them, the Centaur is trying to finish up a heart in the meantime, as uh, he has a Reaver completed. Heart would be like 1500 gold away. So that obviously makes him very, very tanky. It makes the return damage um, do a little bit more damage because it also, it's also bit like you have a fixed value and then it's also based on your strength. So um, he does a little bit more damage with the return. And let's see the slaughter. He goes in, he amplifies the centaur, the centaur gets healed a little bit by the oracle, just just as a, as a constellation price, and the centaur will continue hitting the tower a little bit, the tombstone is getting controlled, it will be healed up, as the invoker needs to be a little bit careful, he's taking a lot of times, false bombs will be used on him, the other side will use his ultimate, Luff will get stunned up, and Alistan will hit onto the starter, the starter will get controlled, and you can see all those zombies clumping up, the tombstone is still alive, and ooh, it will drop down. Let's see the Mirana goes through. We do have the Centaur taking a lot of damage, and now the Oracle will get control. The Scavoy is trying to finish him off. Nine moves forward. They will get the kill onto the Oracle very, very easily, and the Oracle will instantly buy himself back. They will try and take this fight as another Tombstone is online, courtesy of the Morphling. Having multiple Tombstones is always nice. A beautiful Slithering Quest by the Undying. Mana Void will be used. The Undying will be taken down instantly, and now Valkyrie, they're all very, very low. The Centaur will be dropping down in the base. That's two dead on the side of Valkyrie. Um, tornado will be used on the Morphling. The Conker is also very low. He will be taken down. He's not able to get that hit off with the Tidebringer. And the Morphling will just try and disengage himself. He doesn't want to drop down either. The Mirana will actually get the kill onto the Slaughter, who tried to get a kill on him. Sunstrike. Oh, a nice Sunstrike onto the Mirana. Trying to TP himself back to the base, but a little bit too late. A little bit too late. Overall, that's a beautiful hold for one bad gaming. Though they get um, two to three thousand gold that way, they only lose the tier one, the, the tier three, sorry, tower. And you know they lost the slaughter. That's 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 that comes with the price. Doesn't really matter though. Um, he pretty much has enough gold to buy a four staff or transition into a BKB if he wants to. So it's not the worst thing in the world. Now the Mirana actually buys back. A little bit interesting. I guess he's expecting that Wombat Gaming is doing Roshan right now. That's pretty much the only explanation I can think of for him buying back, unless he misclicked, of course. Um, yeah, it looks like they're moving in. The, even the Undying Replicate is moving in. They expect the Roshan to be the instant case from Wombat Gaming, but they were no one yet, so a little bit of an unfortunate buyback. I see the invoke in the bottom lane. He does have a blink. He does have his axe available, and he should also have the travel boots come online very soon, as he's 300 gold away from it. Maybe he will hold on to the money though, so he has buyback when the next push comes through. As Valkyrie, they will move in. They will finish up the Roshan, as uh, that will be the hard complete on the Centaur, um, with an Aegis on top of that. They are very, very scary. I'm not really sure the Centaur will be the one picking it up, though. I imagine the Mirana will be the one doing so. Because the Centaur with the heart should not really be able to die. Anyways, like, if you have 3.1k HP, I'm pretty sure this is not the first one who will die in the fight. Even if he's the one getting focused. So, uh, we'll see. The Antimage does have his Manta Star completed now as well. He's on 1500 gold, so the Basher will uh, will not be too far off either. And uh, he's, he's slowly getting to a point where he will be scary. As uh, we can see from the net worth, he's on the top of the net worth. Finally, the Centaur is keeping himself well up there as well. 
the Morphling as well, courtesy of his Hand of Midas. But uh, it will it will it, it will drop down eventually. The Morphling actually purchased a Medallion of Courage as the next item, which will make the Centaur a little bit stronger. I guess it's just to counteract how much the Elder Titans. The natural order plus the amplified damage from the slaughter does because like I said the synergy between these two heroes um, all the base armor is gone because of the natural order and the slaughter will just make you get minus damage minus armor sorry so um, if you if you give one of your allies 10 armor then at least you take half of a maxed up amplified damage away and it helps it helps a lot he does have the completed solar crest so that will be evasion on top of that and it's 10 armor I believe yeah it's 10 armor the anti -mage in the top lane, he's taking a lot of damage, he's actually almost dropping down, he may drop down from that right like Oh, barely not doing that, uh, so that will be 60 HP survival, but he has to back himself up to the base, and that was just an X mark, so the Marana's right back into the mid lane, they will now siege, and that will be the racks in the mid lane, that will be the attempted thing to take down. The yellow time goes through with his stomp, with his ultimate as well, Scapador will be controlled, he's just morphing a little bit more strength. The yellow Titan will get gone on by left, as the tombstones are flying through, you can see the double tombstone doing the work, and now the boat comes through, a nice stun from 9 on the centaur, he will hit onto 3 people with the boat as well, the anti will be dropping down, the Invoker drops down through the False Promise as well. Now Vinyo on the starter will get control. Placement moves in. Gets the kill with the Star Storms. And now the other side may be a little bit in danger as well. Placement will drop down, but he has the Aegis. So that's just life one. And in the meantime, the anti gets stunned up. He will be taken down again as he bought back. That's a dieback on the anti -mage. Scavo barely survives the um, Sunstrike from the Invoker. And this is looking very scary for Wombat Gaming. As by the looks of things, they just can't control this push. There's just too much happening right now. Uh, the heroes on Valkyrie are too tanky, they have a very very, very easy t uh, way of killing people as well because they just stun with the Morphling, they set up for the kill and then they just walk four people on 